What's going on everyone, it's your average consumer. And as many of you may know, Apple has wrapped up their WWDC 2014 event. And at that event, they announced a couple of new features for iOS 8, as well as Mac OS 10 and some developer features as well. But in this video, we're gonna be talking about the top five features of the newly announced iOS 8. So let's not waste any time, let's get right into it. <laughs> And all right guys, to kickstart this list at number five, we have checking your app battery usage. Now this isn't a feature that was really spoken about during the keynote, but it's a really awesome feature that impacts our day-to-day -day lives because battery life is something that we all have to deal with. So now you're able to go into your settings and actually see how much of your battery is being drained from certain apps. Now this is a great feature because if there's a certain app that is using a lot more battery than you expected, you can go ahead and delete it or maybe manage how much you're using it and definitely save yourself some battery. Now this is an awesome feature that's been available for Android for quite some time now, but it's definitely great to see it come to iOS 8. And I think it's really gonna be helpful to a ton of people in their day-to-day -day uses. So that's why we have app battery usage at number five. And for number four on this list is being able to call out to Siri by simply saying, hey Siri. So no longer do you have to double tap the home button to call out Siri. Now all you have to do is say, hey Siri, and Siri will pop up and you can automatically start asking a question or saying some kind of command. Now this is a really cool feature because now you don't have to touch your phone in order to call out to Siri. You don't have to double tap or anything. But, well, you look at that. I said, hey Siri, and it called out to Siri. But yeah, so now you can actually do that instead of pressing the home screen. So that's really convenient. So this is really cool and it's very similar to something that Android has been doing for quite some time. With Google Now, you can actually just say, okay, Google, and start asking Google Now your question and it'll answer you in a similar fashion. The only caveat to this feature is that in order to use it, your device has to be plugged in. Without it, when you call out, hey Siri, it's not gonna work. But either way, it's really cool that Apple has implemented this feature because you no longer have to look for your phone and double tap it to ask it a question. You can actually just ask it from wherever you are as long as it can hear you without even touching it. So that's what we have at number four. And for number three on this list, we have widgets in the notification center. Now this is a really cool feature, I think, because it now allows for third party developers to make widgets that will go into your notification center. And what really, what that really means is that now you can interact with certain apps without actually being within the app. So that's a really awesome feature. You can do different things depending on what that widget will allow. And by doing that, you're able to you know, interact with an app by not opening it. Now, one of the examples that they showed during the keynote was an eBay widget that allowed you to adjust your bid during the actual bidding session. And this is really cool because if someone outbids you, you can simply pull down your notification center and outbid them right back or adjust your bid, do whatever you want. And that's really awesome because you can interact with an app without being in the app, without having to leave the current app you're in. So let's say you're typing an email, you can pull down notification, bid on the item, and pull it right back up and get back to your email. So that's really, really cool. And this is another feature that Android has had for quite some time, but it's still cool to see it on iOS nonetheless. And that's what we have at number three. And for number two on this list is the new QuickType keyboard. With the QuickType keyboard, you can type up a message and on the top of your keyboard, you'll see predictive text. So if you're having a conversation about movies or dinner, your keyboard is actually going to give you automatic responses so that you can actually just talk about the dinner or the movies or anything that it sees on the screen. So it's smart enough to actually analyze the conversation. But Apple has said that all the information is being stored on the phone. So none of your keyboard things are going to NSA maybe but <laughs> none of it is supposed to be going anywhere. It's supposed to be all kept on the phone. So while it's predicting and reading and all that stuff, you don't have to worry about security because it's supposedly all on your phone. So it learns how you talk, it learns how you type and who you're typing to. So it actually can tell the difference between you talking to your boss or you talking to your friend. So that's really, really cool. And it's gonna be able to predict all the kind of things that you normally say with that individual. And what's also really cool and very unApple like is the ability to have third party keyboards. Apple has stuck with the same keyboard for a very long time until they updated it in iOS 7, but they always, always had the same keyboard and they never really allowed anyone else to make another keyboard. So now they're allowing third party developers to make keyboards so you can eventually see swipe on the iPhone, which is just pretty nuts. So this is really, really cool stuff. 
Um, the keyboard is going to get a lot of changes, so I'm really looking forward to that. And this is something else that Android has been able to do, but a lot of these features are all things that Android has been able to do at this point. But it's really cool nonetheless. iPhone and iPad users are going to be very, very happy. And this is why we have it at number two. And now for number one on the list, we have interactive notifications. Now, I think this is one of the best features that they announced because notifications can sometimes be a pain, especially if it's a text message. You have to leave whatever you're doing and go into that text message and respond and then jump back to the app that you were in before. Now, if you get a text message, you can actually respond to it by simply pulling down the notification a bit and then typing a message out and then sending it and you never have to leave the app you're in. So this is really cool. Or if you get like a cal calendar notification, you can respond right there. So it's really, really awesome stuff. And this is probably one of the best features, I think, because it doesn't slow down the process of using iOS 8. No longer do you have to jump between apps when you have, whenever you get a notification. So I think that's really cool. This is something that, and never mind. Anyway, it's really awesome feature. I like it a lot. And that pretty much wraps up my top five features of iOS 8. Now, I know there were a ton of cool features that I didn't mention here, such as being able to opt out of group messages. I know you iPhone users have been dying for that. <laughs> also being able to access your favorite contacts by double tapping the home screen. Um, also, there's a ton of new features, but let me know what you guys think should have been on this list if I didn't mention it. And if you guys want to get your hands on iOS 8 beta before it's available to the general public, you can check out earlyios.com and by going there, you can register your UDID in order to get access to iOS 8 before everyone else. So definitely check them out. And that pretty much wraps up this video, guys. If you enjoyed it, be the cool guy that hits the like button and subscribe to the channel for more content from me. Till the next video, guys, it's your average consumer. Peace.